Hello, and welcome to my first hazard recognition video. I plan on reviewing three to five hazards at least once a month, identifying the most relevant OSHA standard, and offering some suggestions on how to control the hazards. Remember, these are only suggestions. There's generally more than one solution, and every situation is different. Please take the time to plan your work to eliminate or control hazards. This is safety one, very basic compliance, the blocking and tackling. If you'd like to know more about advanced safety management techniques, follow me on LinkedIn and check out my blog, uh, ToddJeromeJenkins.com. Okay, that's enough of the sh shameless plugs. Uh, there's two ways that you can use this content. The first, pause on each image and jot down what you think the primary hazard is. And then you can go to OSHA.gov and look up the standard to see uh, what standard to cite that, that would cover that. Uh, once you have your answer, hit play and see if we identify the same hazards. Second, just hit play and follow along. Today, uh, we're going to talk about identifying exposures to falls. Falls continue to be the leading cause of death in construction. So let's, uh, let's get started. If you work in commercial construction, you've probably seen a column left unpoured. It may be months before the form is stripped away and the permanent column is installed. OSHA says, Each employee on a walking, working surface shall be protected from tripping in or stepping into or through holes, including skylights, by covers. Regardless of what OSHA says, the best way to control the hazard is to put a cover on it by cutting a piece of three quarter inch to one inch plywood that fits around the column and secures it to the forms. Covers are considered an engineering control and a passive fall protection system. I talk about hierarchy of controls in another video and on my blog. Got up to the fourth floor and this is what the elevator shaft looked like. Not shown in the is the unfinished bottom of the shaft. While they are performing overhead bricklaying, there should still be at least a controlled access zone. OSHA says, Each employee on a walking working surface six feet or more above a lower level where leading edges are under construction, but not who is not engaged in the leading edge work, shall be protected from falling by a guardrail system safety net system, or a personal fall arrest system. If a guardrail system is chosen to provide the fall protection and a controlled access zone has already been established for leading edge work, the control line may be used in lieu of a guardrail along the edge that parallels the leading edge. The best practice for controlling this type of hazard in this situation is to leave the guardrails in place until they need to be removed. Guardrails are considered an engineering control and is a passive fall protection system, meaning the user does not need to do anything to be protected. Let me know in the comments if, if you'd like to know more about fall protection systems. I know the ground's uneven and the bolts and the anchors need to be removed for waterproofing, but there is a safer way to do what you're doing. OSHA has a couple things to say on here. And I suppose that a COSHO or a compliance safety health officer would cite to the more hazardous standard. You can read the relevant standards on the screen, and I am sure this guy is violating several more that I didn't post. There is a cost to safety. You can pay a fixed amount up front, or you can gamble and pay who knows what after an accident. Ladders should have never been allowed to be an option for this work activity. Had a JSA been conducted and, and reviewed by someone who understands the nature of work, there could have been a more productive and safer solution. In this situation, it is recommended to use an articulated boom lift or a MUP or AWP parked on firm level ground. I would also recommend a cordless grinder. As you can see from the photo, the concrete is wet. <clears throat> And what you can't see is the area is very muddy. 
There is an additional hazard of electrical shock. Falls and electrocutions are the top two causes of fatalities on construction projects. Turn the corner to see two iron workers grinding stanchions off intermediate landing. The lower right corner you can see the lanyard wrapped over the craft worker's boot and the horizontal lifeline about 12 inches behind him. The second craft worker has a lanyard secured to his the front of his personal fall rest uh, harness. Before reviewing what OSHA says, we need to agree that removing stanches is not steel erecting and is not a controlled decking zone and does not fall under subpart R. Leave a comment below if you disagree. I'd love to know why. The OSHA regulation states unprotected sides and edges. Each employee on a walking, working surface, horizontal and vertical surface with an unprotected side or edge with six feet or more above a lower level shall be protected from falling by the use of guardrail systems, safety net systems, or per personal fall arrest systems. This is as basic as it gets, folks. The fix is easy. Use the proper fall protection that you are given. I do not see this as an employee behavior problem. This is a failure in the system. Those craft workers should never have been given an opportunity to expose themselves to a fall. While personal fall rest systems are effective, they are PPE in the last line of defense. A better option would be to install guardrails when the stair landing was first set. In this situation, the interior of the stairwell could have been scaffold allowing safe access for all trades that need to work in the area. The exterior of the stairwell could be completed as the scaffolding was dismantled. This is an example of where planning and scheduling would prevent exposure to a hazard. If you look at the second roofer in from the gable end of the roof, you can see the shadow of the harness connected to the horizontal lifeline. You can also see that both roofers are wearing a personal fall arrest harness. You are probably drawn to the lanyard draped over the roof jacks and noticed that the roofer closest to the gable end was not tied off. OSHA says, steep roofs. Each employee on a steep roof with unprotected sides and edges six feet or more above lower levels shall be protected from falling by guardrail systems with tow boards, safety net systems, or personal fall arrest systems. This is behavior all the way. The guy in the back didn't say anything to his buddy. The buddy system failed. Wait, did I say buddy system? Yep. This is a systems failure. The buddy system failed and the training system failed. The individual in the rear didn't get the message that hitting the pause button on work was okay when someone's safety is compromised. He should have refused to hand the exposed roofer the material until he tied off. The unprotected roofer missed the message and thought it was okay to untie because he did not want to move the fall protection system. The supervisor said he could not tell if the fall protection was being used before changing his story to he noticed but didn't say anything. Supervisors cannot walk by and say nothing when they see something, see someone exposed to a hazard, especially one that will probably kill them. How horrible do you think that supervisor would feel if that roofer fell and died? Thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help you recognize fall hazards when planning your next project. Subscribe, hit the notification, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends and colleagues. Visit my website, toddjeromejenkins.com, for more free resources.